And we are back. Thank you for staying with us. In case you are just joining us, you missed a good conversation that I was having with Sakwa, but you are on time for the first conversation of the day, and it's on youth affairs. So today we want to talk about empowering youths in leadership and development. And for this, we have a very great leader who will help us throughout this discussion. His name is David Mwangi. He is a former Nairobi senator aspirant 2022, a political com commentator and a youth leader. He's here with us. Karim Masana. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you. <laughs> I'm glad to be here too. <laughs> have I missed anything in my introduction? Not really. You? you said much, uh -huh. uh, but I know I'll introduce myself uh, more as we continue speaking. As you go. Yes. All right. You have a very rich history. You know, I was just reading your bio. <laughs> you have a very rich history. Before we get to uh, you running for, for sen the senatorial seat uh, in leadership. So maybe you tell us about that. Uh, Eventually, on my bio, you saw it, it's written, mm -hmm. uh, I started leadership way back. My name is David Mwangi. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Nakuru mm -hmm. as a village person, a village boy. I went to the university. I ran for a uh, political seat. I won. Mm -hmm. That is in Maseno University. I became the secretary general. Eventually, I became the acting president in Maseno. Mm -hmm. After that, now I had to know what to do next with my political life. Okay. And uh, I came now to Nairobi. Nairobi now is different. The dynamics are a bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I was a PA to Steve Bogo, who was running for Starehe. And then I became also the PA to Anjigi. He was running for president in 2022. Then I decided also, let me run for something. Okay. So at least we can have a representative of the youth up there. Uh -huh. So that's why I ran for Senate. Wow. Yes. That's, that's a big seat to run for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very ambitious. Yes, and yes. you came out uh, third. Yes, I was third. I was following closely Margaret Wanjiru. Wow. Yes, yes. I mean, that's, that's something. Did you expect to, to, to get there? Uh, I didn't expect to get there. In fact, I expected to win. But now also my, mm -hmm. the, my financial, uh, my financial back, backbone was not that strong. Mm -hmm. And also I didn't have a, a popular party because uh, most of the youth are locked down at the, at the, at the elimination uh, level that is at the nomination level. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but you might need to get to the ballot. Uh, yes. That's something. <laughs> so are you planning to, to um, you know, come back again? Yes. Why? I'm, I'm planning to come back again in 2027, stronger, bigger. Mm -hmm. My opponents should be ready, ready for the vote. <laughs> All right. Yes. We'll, we'll be ready for that. Yes. Okay. So um, talk about... Uh, Talking about empowering youth into into leadership and development. Now that you have a very, uh, you know, good background in in this area, what would you say is required for you know in in youth? What are some of the things that one should look out for in in leaders? Uh, first of all, we can start with a bit of history. Mm -hmm. In the world, we have 1.65% of youth under 25 years in parliament and in leadership positions. You can imagine that figure. Yet we have 40% of youth between 15 years and 27 years. Okay. So if you look at that dynamic, it doesn't work at so all. So 1.65 yes. are the ones who are in leadership, yes. yet we have 40% yes. youth. Below 40, we have 11. Point, I think 85% of mm -hmm. youth. We can call them youth because even 39 is not too old. Mm -hmm. uh, we can call them the youth 11.85% of the whole population in the world being in leadership. Mm -hmm. So there's a big gap yet. Uh, if we talk about below 40, we are talking about more than 50% of the population. Mm -hmm. So the representative is quite low. But what happens is uh, we don't have uh, uh, structures that support the youth when you come outside. <coughs> there. Mm -hmm. You'll find the youth run in, 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 in universities and colleges. You'll find them they are very doing well in, in the leadership positions. But when they come outside here, you'll find that most of them get absorbed and they just, they're nowhere to be seen. Exactly. The challenges are, as I told you, there's mm -hmm. financial pressure, there's economic, that is stroke financial, there's mm -hmm. social, and also there's uh, the last word you can talk about, uh, the confidence. Okay. Yes. So that's, that's a challenge because, yes, I know, you know, even in my campus, previous campus, um, we had leaders, you know, they have great potential. Like this one, if he can be president, <laughs> but then you, de you don't hear them after, after they are done with their fourth year and yes. you wonder where they went. So you've mentioned the finances being a problem yes. uh, and, and all that, but do we also have the, the system being a problem? Because for you to get in, it takes 
you know, there are people who are there. Kuna watu to kwa system. Is it also a challenge? And then what needs to be done, okay. therefore? It's unfortunate uh, also in the political world we have godfathers. Yeah. Tuko na mabazu pale ju. Usipo, eh, follow vizuri, you'll not get to where you're going. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate for that. That's why we said, like in this country, we don't have a political party that is for the youth. Yeah. You'll find that all the political parties are for the old people. The mm -hmm. youth come last. So they decide uh, how to operate their own party. So the political parties, for example, which are a carrier, towards the, to, 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 the, to the elective positions. We don't have one that even believes in the youth as mm -hmm. part of the, and parcel of, of, the, of, of the leadership. We can have an, some examples. Last election, mm -hmm. uh, the youth were the last. You could see if uh, a party is to nominate a candidate somewhere, they don't give it first to the youth. If they would do that, that would be a very good career. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So they need to at least prioritize the youth or the youth to have their own, you know, party. Yes. That will just push them forward, yes. you know, this yes. is for us, this is our voice. But do you think we as youths ourselves really believe in ourselves? Do you think that I would go and, you know, vote for you in because the perception is usually that this person will just go in, they have so much life in them and they'll just go and eat my money, <laughs> you know, or they don't have experience. I don't know if we ourselves trust ourselves as youths to hold these positions or to support our own. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first challenge, the youth don't trust themselves. And also the youths don't trust other youths. Mm -hmm. You'll find that when uh, you're vying, people will be giving you support at the youth. If they vote you in, I'm telling you, you pass. Yeah, because they're the majority. You, you, because <laughs> they're the majority. But now you find that youth also don't trust themselves. Why? The, the generation that is before us didn't do the proper mentorship towards the youth. Mm -hmm. So you find that most of the youth are in the darkness. Uh, me, I'm okay, finally, because I have tried to maneuver. But you'll get that most of the people uh, who had the belief of doing the leadership, mm -hmm. when they are outside here now, you have one problem, food, clothing, and shelter. That first, you forget about the leadership. <laughs> you have first to solve your problems yeah. so that you can solve other people's problems. Yes. All right, so how do, you, how do you deal with that? How did you maneuver from your own experience? When we talk about the financial struggles, it's hard unless you have now a godfather who will support you in your political endeavors. Yes. So how do you, as a youth, you know, continue with your political aspirations from campus and, you know, towards um, the playing field? Uh, personally, I believe so much in networking. Other than doing politics, I'm also in, a, in, a, in the business field. I'm a businessman. Uh -huh. So you find that you have to have a backbone where we are talking about finances. Because without finances, you're going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And you cannot be depending on your godfathers all the time to mm -hmm. give you or to push you. Yeah. Personally, I didn't have enough. That's why I wasn't that much publicized. But uh, eventually, I'll have enough and push for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to encourage also the youth, even if you don't have so much, the little that you have. Was it to me a hotel because you'll get depressed, you'll die. <laughs> but <laughs> use the second to wow. make it all go push, eh? push a little bit. <laughs> don't push too much. If it is not working, you'll always have a next time. And uh, that's how it goes. <laughs> okay, I love that. Yes. Uh, that's very honest. You've been very uh, blunt. Yes, yes. Don't <laughs> die. Don't, don't, don't use all of it. Yeah, be wise. Be yeah, you know wise. Uh, uh, otherwise, depression will hit. Yes. So <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so for, um, for you, you know, how did you nurture, when talking about now development, you know, how do you, did you nurture your, your leadership skills? How do you hone your skills as a leader, someone who's aspiring? Maybe it's someone who's not even holding any position in campus, you know, mm -hmm. but they desire to, to be in leadership. So how do you get to that point? Uh, in leadership, there are two things that the youth should look at. There's nurturing, as you're talking about, and there's keeping the heritage. Mm -hmm. Let's start with nurturing. Nurturing is when you start training yourself or you're getting trained to be a leader. Uh, a leader does not make commands. A leader is your actions. People follow your actions. Mm -hmm. Most of us youth, it is rare for us to be followed because also our actions are not in line with what people would aspire to have. Mm -hmm. That is one of the challenges. Number two, most of us leader, youths <laughs> have lost the direction. We're not living for tomorrow, we're living for today. Okay. You don't have a leader who lives for today. Uh, a leader <coughs> should live for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you should be knowing your 20 years aspiration. What do you want to become as a leader? Where do you want to be 
what do you want to be doing in the next 10 years? What's your plan, the immediate plan that is a five years plan? And then after that, you can be able to make one year plan, one month plan, and daily plans. But without all that, you will not be able to make it. Mm -hmm. That is now nurturing the leader. Mm -hmm. the, sec the second bit and the second part is the heritage part. Heritage is uh, mm -hmm. keeping what you've learned and uh, uh, putting it into practice and guarding and safeguarding it. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, we'll have leaders or the college campus. After that, dead. Done. The story is finished. Your story is done. Why? Because you cannot keep the heritage. The heritage that you were nurturing during those younger years, you reach around 28, 29, you lose it. Mm -hmm. When you lose it, you lose the heritage. And now we lose you as a, le as a leader. Okay, yes, wonderful. Yes, yes, so yes. it's the nurturing and the heritage. Yes. Amazing. Simple and very clear. <laughs> very clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and now, you know, when we talk about leadership, how would you say, you know, with our political sphere, how yes. it is, how would you say now bringing youth leaders into this space because there's a lot of corruption if you are being honest yes there's a lot of corruption in leadership now th that's why you wonder do we we actually ask do we have leaders or do we have politicians so how do we how do we bring leaders into uh, a pol politicians <laughs> you know <laughs> den or field or whatever we call it leadership and politics are very hard to bring together and merge mm -hmm. Number one, politics rewards the loyal soldiers. You can be a loyal soldier and you're not a leader. Uli campaign, uka campaign ya mtu, uka pay appointment. But you're not a leader. Mm -hmm. You didn't even want the position, but it's a reward because, because you worked. Loyal. Yeah, so you are loyal, it works. So <laughs> we say that uh, in leadership, or no, sorry, in politics, uh, mm -hmm. loyalty is rewarded in bits, but this loyalty is you know. Yeah, in a country <laughs> immediately, yeah. It is punished yeah, in yeah. The, with immediate effect. But now the challenge is you'll find other leaders, good leaders, but in a different political sphere with the with maybe for example the current regime. So mm -hmm. for them they will not get the opportunity. They'll have to wait and wait until their people also are in leadership so that they can be able to give us the leadership that they have. Mm -hmm. So that is a, about that is a bit of cha a challenge. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that most youths uh, disappear into that. They are good, they would like to give leadership to their country, but mm -hmm. now the political vehicle that they win uh, probably didn't win the election, so they are left and they are locked out. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the challenges. Uh, one, the best way to solve that is, uh, for example, if we can have a political vehicle that involves the youth and it is for the youth, that can be able to champion for the, for the youth. Like in Wazewingi and Ogopa, uh, and they will not agree that to happen. And then also when it happens, most of the youth will say, Ah, nini, ni kuchotewa, mnachotewa. You on some other side, you've been supported by your godfathers, <laughs> but you're lying to us that you're the face of the youth. Mm. So those are a bit of the challenges that you're having. Also, the youth of this country have so much to do. Yeah. They, as I told you, they have to stand f by themselves financially, mm. economically, education-wise. So most of them will shy off from the political Pro side. Pro but, yeah. Yeah, but by the end of the day, the political side, even if you shy from it, it is it has the solutions to the problems that mm. you're having. Mm -hmm. yes. So they should still just pursue, yes, pursue yes, it regardless. Yes, yes, yes. And there's this notion that people also have, you know, that uh, young people are all about demos. Right? When you encompass it, the strikes, the <laughs> demos that, you know, secretary generals <laughs> like you were, <laughs> you know, and president stayed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's the perception that people have. But... In in a country like ours, sometimes you have to, to shout to be heard. But how you know what's your what's your take on that, and what could be done to to change these perceptions that people have? <laughs> Anytime you have or you see a hungry dog, always know it can even bite the owner. <laughs> so when the youths are, are are hungry, they are bitter with the with the current leadership. Yeah, they all result to demonstrations. They are bitter in life. They want to bring chaos mm -hmm. but as long as the youth are fed well feeding fast eh? they have to be fed well number two they have a purpose in life it is sorry you will not find demonstrations mm -hmm. also there are better ways to air our grievances and to air our challenges mm -hmm. and uh, any youth would like you'd like to employ that uh, demonstrating is not the best way and when we have injuries we have so much <laughs> issues that happen the, the aftermath of a demonstration is the worst part you know you people see demonstrations 
on the front line. Mm -hmm. Now there's us who see the demonstration behind the story. <laughs> eh? Those calls from eh, DCI, those calls from OCS, yes, those calls from come write a statement, what was, what was happening? They're not the best. Uh -huh. We have better ways that we can use even to take our, our, our grievances and to take our, our requests and suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, Pallet you. Okay, yes. so we just need to have better structure. Yes, yes, <laughs> and they also need to be heard because there's no need of having a structure that, it ca that cannot be implemented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the, the the government, let's say, they need to hear the youth, yes. you know, yes. and this will create a good environment even for nurturing mm. young leaders yes. into the political sphere. Yes. Uh, something else that is affecting the youth, I don't know if the youth leaders, let's say mental health, could it be a hindrance or something? Because when we're talking of, uh, you had mentioned mental health, so maybe talk to us about it a little bit. Uh, mental health is another is a different issue altogether, mm -hmm. but it's affecting the youth. We are having one out of every four youth has an issue with mental health. It's affecting also the old people and mostly the youth. Yeah. If you're having a, a, a figure of one uh, versus four of each person, you can mm -hmm. imagine how many people are having issues with mental health. Yeah. But mental health is not is is a is not is, we cannot call it a disease. It is a condition that is caused by other conditions, uh, maybe historically. Number one, it can be caused by poverty, uh, unemployment. Those challenges are okay. the ones that uh, cause mental health. And uh, the current youth is not able to fight. Why? Because there's no, there's no one who holds their hand. So you'll find that right now we're having too many cases of alcoholism. We're having drug abuse. We're having suicide. We're having uh, uh, fights mm -hmm. and, and a lot of deaths in our apartments and BNBs. You look at that uh, sphere and you'll see that it is all affecting the, the current youth. Mm -hmm. uh, for mental health, you have to make a decision uh, to go for counselling. Most of the youths are not able to pay for that. You'll find that calling a counsellor, talking to them is 5,000 per hour. Now, if you yeah. get 5,000, will you eat or will you call the mental person to help you? Mm -hmm. You'll first eat first. Eat. So you find that uh, you'll continue da getting damaged eventually because you don't have the money. Mm -hmm. So what I would uh, suggest is the government should have uh, uh, places that, uh, not Madara exactly, but uh, counsellors who are just free, who can be called, and any time they can assist our, our youth. Are you? Yes. 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 When, when, I, when I was doing my senatorial bid, eh, one of my one of my uh, points was mental health. I mm -hmm. wanted to create a, a mental facility in Nairobi whereby people can just walk in, talk their problems, shout, cry, and live with their family. And leave. Yes. Wow. Yes, yes. I mean, that's a good that's a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, really, it's something. You know, mental issues. It's something that's affecting the youth. We've seen rising cases of depression. You know, uh, death by suicide, we've seen femicide happening, and this is all around mental health. So if we can have that, you know, leaders prioritizing that, then that's, that's something that would really help the country. Now, um, back again to, uh, to the youth, you know, uh, we have talked about us choosing us, as youths choosing us in, in these <laughs> positions. Yes. But, you know, we, ha we have both those that are really for true leadership and those that are just there for for money and political gains and all that that they can get so how do you as voters you know how do we identify people that are true leaders what what are some of the things that show because you know when coming up with a manifesto it's all beautiful and brilliant until <laughs> one gets to office so what really <laughs> shows a true leader number one the voters per se, of this country don't go much into the history, into the leadership manifestos mm -hmm. that the leaders have. This country can win an election without a manifesto. <laughs> Very fast. You just yeah. need to have money and move. Mm -hmm. You just even don't need a manifesto. You mm -hmm. can just put your cars in a, in a good uh, motorcade, go telling people to vote you in, and they'll vote you in, depending on how much you have. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a generation that is rising. As the youth we are educated, we read a lot, we are exposed, and we can now decide to, if it is eating the money of one aspirant, eat it, but choose a person <laughs> who can assist you. Mm -hmm. This is by reading the manifestos, also question them. Before the election, we always have an, a question and answer. You can see in other countries that, like the US, you'll have a one-on-one -on -one with the aspirant. But most of the Kenyans, even if you have a one-on-one -on -one with the aspirant, what you do, you ask him for money for, for lunch. Mm -hmm. You don't question him. You tell him, Mahesh Chote. 
and Muhesh will do the same. We'll chatter you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he'll have to regain back his money. So by the time you, you think uh, you've elected the person who will assist you, for him, he has another, another agenda of reclaiming the money that he had used to buy you lunch. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the challenges. Uh, put, uh, always put the leaders on a scale. A scale whereby you can see what they need to do for the country, what they need to do for the county, what they need to do also for you as an individual. If they have nothing to do and they have nothing uh, uh, that is going to help you in the next five years, just, just don't vote them in. Okay. But uh, the challenges, as I told you, we are still having that generation that uh, will want to see to uh, uh, Wapi. In the, in the morning of the election, <laughs> there's a Kenyan who doesn't know he's voting for who. He'll go asking a neighbor, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to make a neighbor for the next five years. You know, that is one of the challenges that we have. And yeah. also now, at least we are bringing up a generation that does not know tribalism, the youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> that will work greatly towards the next election and towards okay. the next uh, political or economic revolution whereby mm -hmm. people don't understand the tribes, people intermix. Mm -hmm. yes, and yes. that's a positive thing to yes, have. Yes, you know, yes. we're not tri tribalistic anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that will change even how we relate to each other when yes. during lots of elections, yeah. you know, you know, and all that. So basically what we have said is know the background of the person that you're voting in. Yes. Take an interest in the leaders that we have. You know, sometimes it's just as long as you know the president, you, you're voting for, the governor, you know, and then the senator <laughs> and you're yes, done. Yes, the rest, yes. you know, you leave it for guesswork or to ask the rest. But we really need to take an initiative and, and get to know these people. Yes. Um, what I also wanted to know, uh, to ask, is th what is the importance or what is the place of having mentors in leaders that are coming up, not just even in the political sphere, but in different areas, CEOs in the business world? What is the place of having mentors? You know, as you, you as you, who, have you had mentors and how has that um, contributed to the person you have become? Okay. Uh, the issue of mentors, to touch on it again, in the business world and in the political world, as we said, there's a vacuum there, mm -hmm. whereby the youths are not being mentored the right way. That's why you'll find that the politicians are fighting alcoholism, but they're not fighting after alcoholism. Mm -hmm. What next? What is the cause of the rampant economic, uh, alcoholic uh, shoot or percentage in the country? Mm -hmm. Why are the youth drinking like this? The youth are drinking like that because there's no mentorship. That mm -hmm. is the whole point. They, d they didn't find people who tell them, reduce on this, panga ivy, don't drink on Monday morning. CNN they looked and packed Tuesday. You know they <laughs> didn't find that, so they found yeah. a world that was so open, mm. a world that was so uh, welcoming towards the side where there is no mentorship. They didn't find so much businesses being done and being started. I can tell you for sure, very few youths in this country have startups that are working. In three four years, your startup is gone. Even one year, your yeah. startup is gone. Maliza, yote yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. There is no mentorship. Even if you're given a loan, loans are accessible, that's mm. okay. But even if I give you a loan today and I don't mentor you, I don't tell you how to invest, you lose the money. Even if you are given a million today and uh, not given a business idea whereby you can follow a path, a certain f path and, and, and move and up to where you can multiply the money to 10, 20 million, you will still lose it. So that gap that you're having, number one, uh, we need men who are up there, 40s, 45, 50s, mm -hmm. to, 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 to think about the youth. Uh, try mentor a friend, try mentor a neighbor, try mentor a person who calls you an uncle. So that is how we start it. Mm -hmm. It should start from top and now as it headed, it's, it's headed down here. And then after that, we'll have a generation that at least understands yes. how, how things are going. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have so many youths getting unemployed, crying, akuna kazi, but even if they do start up, there's no opportunity and there's no mentorship. Okay. Yes, yes, and yes. the problem that, you know, uh, what the older generation says about the youths is that um, this uh, Gen Z particularly is a popcorn generation or instant coffee kind of generation. They want things instantly. <laughs> so that might also apply even in leadership, you know, wanting things to just happen immediately, instantly. And maybe even with mentors, they want things to, you know, things to happen and maybe... So what needs to change in the thinking of the youth that are even watching now? Gen Z, Mrs. Wengine ni hapo juu kidogo ya Gen Z. What you need to understand, nothing comes easy, nothing comes fast. Mm -hmm. Bro, or my sister, nothing comes fast. There's a process to life. Yeah. Even if you get it fast, it will end fast. 
Uh, and then life does not end on Sherehe. It doesn't end there. In fact, I think it starts there. <laughs> so, ukipata kidogo bwana usimalize yote. Piga sherehe kidogo, bakisha kidogo, save. And then after that, now we can start the conversation. Because you'll find that, also me have employed guys. I think I've employed a few people. And you'll find that the, our generation, they give up so fast. Someone, you'll call them in the, in the, in the morning on a Monday. They didn't tell you they're resigning, but <laughs> they will not pick your call. So it's morning, for example, in this show. The presenter doesn't appear. You like can imagine how the producer now starts now. <laughs> From where do you even start? <laughs> so we're having such challenges. Yeah. And there's a barrier of communication. And then there's also this story. I don't know. They're calling it D&D. &D, mm -hmm. Whereby you cannot mm -hmm. call. Past. You have to text. Yeah. You have to Bro, put your phone on. Let these people call you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a billionaire. Why are you putting your phone off? And now you have to keep on texting you, asking you where you are. <laughs> it is not that time. Put your phone on. Yeah. Let us call you. Communicate. The, the problem with our generation is communication. Yeah. And uh, we are looking for peace of mind. But how are you looking for peace of mind if you don't want to work? <laughs> mm -hmm. So nothing comes easily. Nothing comes fast. And okay. when it comes fast, it is not even blessed. When it comes fast, it ends so fast. So there's a process to life. Mm -hmm. And you're 20, you're 25, bro, you still have a whole 40, 50 years ahead. Yeah. So don't think life ends here. It just started. Be soft on yourself and just uh, look for a mentor and uh, things will be fine. All right, yes, amazing. <laughs> and you, um, my shout, Sana, I think you just, <laughs> you, you have just said, uh, said it as it is because, mm -hmm. you know, Many youths hide behind, the, especially this generation, of, uh, behind my, I'm protecting my mental health. Yes. And it's okay to protect your mental health, <laughs> but it's okay to also just work, you know, work mm -hmm. your way up. Mm -hmm. You know, put in the work, yes. you know. And uh, we respect boundaries, but just just be ethical in your, in your work ethics. And now, there's this thing about, um, now I'm forgetting it, I'm almost forgetting it. Uh, the place of looking for mentors yourself, identifying mentors, uh, who might not be within your reach, but you can follow their footsteps, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, mentorship right now is very easy. Mm -hmm. During our father's eras, to get a mentor, you had to look for him physically, talk to him physically. Right now, you can look for your mentor through social media. You can look for him through all the, the, the handles that you can talk about, mm -hmm. Facebook, what, uh, Twitter. They're all, all over. And so... It's easier to communicate, and you don't have even to communicate. You have also to, you can see their structural, uh, uh, how they have set up their life. You can see how they have set up their emotional life, how they have set up their financial life without even meeting them. Mm -hmm. Whereby, uh, if today I have a mentor, I can just follow them. By following them and trying to check how they're operating, I can be able to get inspired by that. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, for example, if you're having an international mentor, Labdo Mechoka na Kenya, Ubasema, Mimi Nataku deal na to international. Just go to their handles and you'll start understanding how they work. Exactly. I am certainly sure that eventually you'll meet them. It doesn't have, you don't have to meet them right now. And it's a process, as we said. You'll, f you'll meet them or you'll have another mentor that you'll also meet on the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Awesome, yes. amazing. Well said. Finally, I don't want you to leave. I know we've been discussing this mostly um, almost skewed to the political side. But now that you're in business also, uh, how do we empower youths in, in this other field, in business, and even for those that are in career, you know, yeah. how do they develop themselves? Yeah. Uh, Kenya is a third world country, but it operates like a second world or first world country. I tell my friends, I tell the youth that I mentor, one income is never enough. It is never enough. Mm -hmm. You work from, f from, from eight to five, it is never enough. You need some, some time to create your own your own ideologies, what you want to do after you retire, what you want to do when you're fired. Mm -hmm. You know, firing and hiring happens anytime. Uh, hiring is a process. Firing is not a process. <laughs> so always know that uh, you can be fired anytime. What do you do after that? So you have a challenge whereby if you're fired or if you lose your job right now, today, mm -hmm. I ask my friends, how long would you stay without having another job? Would you stay six months? Would you be comfortable for that long without mm -hmm. asking for money from your friends? And uh, know that in this life, yeah. there are only two people who can save you. It's only you and God who can save you. Mm -hmm. These other people are just there because of what you give. And you may not be important forever. So you have to understand that. And then also want to encourage more youth to do businesses. Uh, okay. Start small. You cannot begin as a manager. You cannot begin 
up there selling a multi um, a multi, multi uh, orders you need to start with one two improve on quality improve on, on quantity and mm -hmm. eventually you'll make it otherwise if we keep on crying here that the government is not giving the youth jobs we will fail okay. like now you can see we have a challenge right now mm -hmm. it's unfortunate eh? Our neighboring countries, we have so many, I won't mention the tribes and I won't mention the countries, but you can <laughs> see we have so many immigrants in this country, mm. whereby they are doing the small mi millennial jobs that Kenyans should be doing. They are doing, uh, ladies love doing nails uh, from uh -huh. the international eh, <laughs> part, eh? <laughs> let me say that, eh? yeah. from the international level, eh? mm. whereby not most Kenyans are doing their nails. But you'll find that uh, even in the barber shops, you can get someone selling coffee in this country who is not a Kenyan. I don't even understand how that system works. <laughs> you find beggars on the street, they're not even Kenyans. <laughs> Why? Because uh, I will not go to begging, I don't want Kenyans to beg personally, but these other small businesses like coffee, doing nails, barber shops, mm. we need to, the youth to, to get in charge. To take them up. Yeah, we, we need the, the youth of this country to take them up. They have, these jobs have a lot of money, but mm. no one will tell you. Mm -hmm. No one, until you get into that business when you understand it. Mm. But most of us are looking for white collar jobs. We want to get a lot of money very fast. It doesn't work that way. You have to get on your hands on and see what, what is really happening. Mm -hmm. That is uh, one of the challenges that I've seen in Nairobi personally. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're having so many youths saying they don't have jobs. We're having so many youths coming in without even documentations. And they're doing fine. They're doing even better than most of our youth. The youth. Yes, wow. yes, yes, yes. That's amazing. You know, you... We, we ought to create the employment ourselves, mm -hmm. create employment mm -hmm. for ourselves and even employ others yes. in the business world. So there's this thing, people say, oh, maybe business siango. <laughs> do we have businesses? Okay, are people called to business or can anyone do business? Uh, anyone can do business. This country is so open. And like even in the political world where you have mm -hmm. to be about 23 and above, in business, you can even be 18 and start doing businesses. Most of the countries where they are so much developed, you find that a person started doing a business when they were too young. Mm -hmm. No one should lie to you that you'll start a business at 50 and now be have the same knowledge and same mentality as someone who started the same business as, as you're doing at 18 years old. For them, they'll have more, more experience, they will have more exposure, they'll have more, they can fight more. They can uh, be able to get more new ideas because they have a history of what has been happening. So the earlier you start, the better. When you start a business when you're a youth, you risk two things. You risk losing the business or making it in the business. And when you lose the business, you're still young. You can start another business. Mm -hmm. When you're 45, you cannot, if you start a business to fail, you have to think, how will my children eat? Wha how will they go to school? When you're a youth, you can start all over again. All again. over again, all over again. Yeah, yes. we, we have the time. We yes. have the time to, all that space to mm -hmm. fail and start mm -hmm. again, to mm -hmm. fail and start it again, because there's no really something that's holding you back. Yes, and failing you'll fail. Mm -hmm. I tell my friends the same thing and those who I mentor. Failing you'll fail. You'll start a business today, you're 100% sure it will make it. And then boom. Two weeks down the line, you'll fail <laughs> totally. You're starting from scratch. You have no rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you don't have rent or when you failed in that business and you had already moved out maybe uh, to a better place, don't feel shy to go back to where you started again. <laughs> it yeah. is, that is how the challenge. Go if back to your mom's place back. until now you can <laughs> go move back. Into Nobody your will place ask again. you. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of being a youth. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many trials. You know, you can have so many trials and error until yeah. you get it right. Yeah. Wonderful, amazing. <laughs> so this is where we want to put uh, to to put a close on mm -hmm. the conversation. Thank but you. let me allow you space to to say something to the youths in okay. case we have not mentioned. Yes. This is your camera. Uh, the youth of this country, as we've said, we are still young. I've travelled a few countries, not so much, like twenty countries, and I wow. can tell you, the youth of this country are passionate. They are mm -hmm. hardworking. They are smart. But kuna kitu moja tu wapunguze, wapunguze kujiona wakiwa smart. But always know you're smart. <laughs> know that you don't have to choose the job. Make sure you choose what the job gives you. It gives you money, do it, my brother. And then there's no instant gratification in business. It will never happen. Uh, because one thing, if you get it fast, you'll not maintain it. If you get it with a process and slowly, you'll be able to maintain it. Uh, no one should tell you education is useless. Education gives you network. Education gives you the best people that you can work with in your life. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Uh, you have said, you start it, let it fail, do it again. Fail, do it again, bro. You mm -hmm. should. One day you'll make it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that now because you're doing it and you're doing and you're doing, you'll fail. Mm -hmm. You'll make it. 
Okay, yes, wonderful. And you can follow me on Instagram. I yeah. can mentor you. I, I personally handle my all my social media pages. I'll wonderful. answer you and I'll give you my number. We'll talk. Okay. Yes, yes. That's very yeah. nice of you. Where can they find you on social media? Uh, uh, Facebook is Honorable David Moingi. Mm -hmm. Twitter, Honorable David Moingi. And Instagram, Honorable David Moingi. Okay, yes. so Honorable David Moingi across yes. all the social across platforms. Across all the social media. All right, thank you very much <laughs> for coming on board and sharing this amazing insights. We yes. hope to have you again for uh, you know, again same again or again. different conversation. Yes. All right, I've taken so many things from this. Um, if you're a youth, you've been told, did not choose the job, choose what the job gives you. And, uh, you know, so many other things that you have taken from the conversation. Just step out, step out in faith. Let's take up these positions ourselves. You know, let's support the youth as youths. Let's support the youths. Uh, this has been an amazing conversation with uh, Honorable David Mwangi, who's a former Nairobi Senator Aspirant 2022, also a political commentator and youth leader. Thank you for this uh, time that you've given us to take you through the conversation. And I've been told to read some of the comments before we close on social media because Brian Sako is coming up next with uh, the next interview and uh, today we just want to explore some of the great sites that we have in Kenya. What is your holiday destination? Which holiday destination would you rather go to from the ones that you have already gone? Um, so I'll just read a few. Joshua Molindo, Anasama, watching Outama Yuge, Sultan, Anasama, Mimi Nicole locked from Nairobi, Mombasa. From Nairobi, Mombasa is the best place. Ninge Pendani Pelekembogi.